Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 161. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, guys, gals, people of all ages, I got a couple of announcements and then something special for you. Uh, we've been working through some things inside of uh, the members area. So in the members area, there's lots of content, lots of training, you know, in, in many different ways. But what's been hot this past week has all been all about retirement plans. And I figured, hey, let's take a little bit of that and share it with everybody so that you guys can learn some too. And again, admittedly, I'm telling you right now up front, you're not getting 100% of it because not all of you listening to me right now are members, but you can easily become one because we have a simple dollar trial. If you want to find out about that, you can go to cashflowdiary.com forward slash training, cashflowdiary.com forward slash training if you actually want to do that. But for now, let's talk a lot about uh, the whole thing of retirement plans. I invited a, a special guest, if you will, who, who has been doing retirement planning and in, in, in the sense of helping people self-direct their retirement plans for a long time. So I wanted to get the information out there because it's been a while since we've done something like this. But here's the something special that I really want everyone to know about. Many of you know uh, that previous uh, years we've done a special event with some uh, ba professional basketball players and notable individuals before, and we partner with uh, organizations to go out there and do a basketball and cash flow clinic. Well, the cool thing is, is we're doing it again. This time we're going to be closer to our own neck of the woods in the L.A. area. So uh, we're still looking for volunteers. What does this mean? This means we're going to be playing a cash flow game where you're going to get to meet, yes, some notables from the area and whatnot. But this is about the kids and we're going to do our best to help them learn basketball skills as well as cash flow game. And I'm putting a call out to all of you out there who know how to play this game, would love to help us pull off another incredible event like we did before in the Memphis area. We're doing it again. All you got to do is send in an email over to info at cashflowdiary.com. Again, that's info at cashflowdiary.com. Let us know that you would be willing to participate and help us out. It's May 2nd. It's all day. It's in the LA area. So if you're already going to be in that area, feel free to drop us a line and say, hey, I would love to help and volunteer. Here. I've played the cash flow game before. Plus, you'd get to see me facilitate it with a group of kids, which I think is awesome. Uh, it's just fun. It's just going to be flat fun. So uh, consider this your invitation. If you are available, that would be great. And last but not least, many of you know that what we are doing right now is we are pulling a drawing every week. Uh, every week and until July 4th. So you have a shot to win every week. Uh, and today's winner is his username was Scott9744. Scott9744, who left a review of the podcast. That's all you got to do to enter. So every week you just go over to iTunes, leave a written review so that I can know who you are. I will announce you as the winner here. Scott. S-C-O-T-T-9744. -T -T I need you to email us at info at cashflowdiary.com so that we know we are with your name and address and whatnot because we can't send you a cash flow game electronically. As much as we would like to, it just doesn't work. So if you'd like to be entered into a chance, and again, this is going to happen. So if you entered this week, you'll be entered in all, automatically entered in all the successive weeks by entering in this week. All of you who have already left a, a written review, uh, you're automatically entered. Thank you very much. We're going for more. Now, I'm sure after all that, you're ready to get over to figuring out. And here's the key. This is why I wanted to share this. This information that you're going to learn on this particular episode, this was the key to us being able to raise our first, I'd say, at least $5 million worth of capital. 
So I'm going to say that you're going to want to listen to the entire thing and you're not going to want to miss a minute of it. And if you are one of the members listening right now and you haven't listened to this whole thing, well, the good news is, is that you can go into the members area right now and catch up on it. Uh, all of the pieces uncut, unedited, etc., and you'll be able to make some progress and move forward. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get this thing on the road. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hey, everybody. Glad that you are making the time. This is Jay. If you haven't heard my voice before, I'm glad that you are here. Uh, We are definitely getting everything set up while many of you are logging on and giving people a little bit of extra time. So uh, I know that time is precious. We will definitely do our best to give you nothing but focused content uh, so that you can go out there and become bigger, better, better investors that I know you want to be and looking for those ways to make that happen. So uh, keep making sure that you, you know, you can hear us, make sure that you can, if you've got any questions, you can type them in the boxes. Uh, I'm, we are monitoring those uh, as best we possibly can. Uh, the same with the chat. Uh, Ray has a question already or not. Yes, it looks like it. Hold on. Ray says, happy birthday, Jay. That is correct. Today is my birthday. Thank you, oh my gosh. Ray. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yay, happy birthday. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And uh, that is good stuff. So, uh, yes, well, we know that Ray knows how to use the question and chat box. That's good. If you have a question, feel free to go ahead and do the same thing. We are here. Uh, you can raise your hand. You can ask the questions. We're doing our best to to monitor them. Uh, and as, as best we possibly can. We'll get started here in about 30 more seconds, and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, okay, everybody, thank you. Um, happy birthdays. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, George. Uh, those are those are good things there. Um, most people tend to remember it's more Christmas than my birthday, but <laughs> it's all good, Ray. See what you started. So this is good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Um, well, at least nothing else. I know that you can hear me because you're responding. Uh, so that's great. That That's good. And I think you guys are going to enjoy the information. And some of you are going to see some pictures uh, of some deals that, uh, at least from me, that you've never seen before. At least I don't think you've seen them before uh, in types of what, what really can be done here. And, and it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I promise you we're going to use every second. And if you've got a question, the moment you have that question, you need to go ahead and type that in. In fact, if you know you've got a question about how to use retirement plans or even what self-direction is for myself or Karin, now would be a good time to start that because here's the thing. Uh, once we get started, it, it's always tough to get to every question. And what's really going to help you get your question answered is to have it in there earlier. So that would be good. That would be good. Uh, We have someone from Italy, Thomas. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, Glad to hear that, you know, we have crossed uh, the the pond, so to speak, that water. And and that's good. We're going to get started here in about 30 seconds, making sure that we give everybody an opportunity to be here uh, on time and give you guys some quality information as much and as fast as we possibly can. This would be the time to turn off that cell phone, turn off the other distractions. If you've got Facebook open, close it. Turn off the instant messengers and all that other stuff because the information you're going to receive today is definitely uh, life-changing. And I, and I don't use those words lightly. I know it sounds like, oh, life-changing, whoop de doo right? Uh, but I promise you, it literally is. And I'll describe what that means here in just a second. So as we get started, if there's someone that you know needs to be here that isn't, tell them, get here now uh, because they, they do need to be here. You have your links. You can email them that email and kind of go from there. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the more people that know about these strategies, these uh, techniques and whatnot, I think the better uh, for the entire U.S. economy or your economy, whatever country you might be in. So cool. Uh, I think the name is Mud, Mud, Madhu. I see your question. I will definitely make sure um, that Karin gets that. So, yeah. And uh, speaking of which, if when you're typing in your question, uh, you if you can just make sure, you know, just put a J or a K in front of it, that'll tell me or, or whoever's looking at them who that question is specifically for uh, so that we have a shot at making sure it goes to the correct person. Uh, that would be great. 
And just in case we're not, just in case it's not clear, but Madhu, your question is very, very clear. So I see where it's going on. Awesome. Excellent. So here come the Karin. I hope you're ready because here come the questions and <laughs> I can see them already. I'm like, woohoo. Here ready. we go. Here we go. All right. So let's get this party started. Okay, everybody, thanks uh, for taking the time to be here. My name is Jay. If you haven't heard before, I am the founder CEO of cashflowdiary.com. I, I, I love the fact that we can work together. And, and I don't know if you've ever heard about this particular subject before of self-directing your retirement plans, or if you're here uh, because you know uh, Karin and you're like, okay, cool. I, I get the self-direction, but what can I do with it really? Uh, we're going to cover both of those things for sure in this particular webinar. We're going to show you why it's possible, how it's possible, how long it's been possible, and why most people don't even realize the opportunity that's right under their noses, and most importantly, how they can easily begin to do something and take more control uh, of their retirement and not necessarily have to be whipsawed by the market and in and, and various of many different directions. One of the things that I, I've got to do, I just want to let everybody know that it, it, the, the individuals that you're, you're going to hear from today is by far one of the most important individuals to my entire real estate investing career. If it wasn't uh, for our speaker today, we I would I don't know what would have happened <laughs> to be honest. And, and she's she's been there to help me get started. Uh, I know some of you, if you've participated in some of our courses, raising private capital, etc. I tell you all the time that you've got to you know build quality relationships with a lot of the right vendors, and you're going to be introduced today to one of those right vendors because I, I can easily easily say uh, the first five million or so dollars was uh, that I was able to raise and gain access to was because of this particular individual and most importantly, this particular strategy. So you're in the right place today. You're in the right place. And let me just also be very, very clear in saying whether you have a retirement plan at this moment or not, this webinar is definitely for you. You need to be able to be aware of this situation so that you can get more deals done because it was the fact that I didn't, even though I didn't have a retirement plan, this particular strategy is what catapulted the, you know, my real estate career and gave it the the fuel that it needed in order to actually get off the ground. So hopefully you are ready to listen and hear, take notes, and most importantly, take some immediate massive action, learn to move at the speed of instruction as we all listen to Ms. Karin Hall. Karin, you there? Oh, Jay, thank you. Yes, I'm here. Thanks so much. What a what an amazing introduction. I greatly appreciate it. And I have a lot of excellent content, so I'm, I'm, I'll just jump right in. Um, as Jay said, my name is Karin. It's Karin Hall, and I'm president of UDirect IRA Services. And what we do is we help people to take their retirement money and to invest it outside the stock market, to invest in what you know best. What we don't do, though I have to mention a little disclaimer, is what we don't do is provide tax advice. Uh, we don't provide legal advice, and we're not providing investment advice either, telling you if something is a good or bad investment or so forth. Um, and we also don't endorse any particular investment. We're here to, uh, you know, basically tell you all about self-directing, and that is what we do all day long. Uh, so here we go. We'll get started. When it comes to saving for retirement, it's just so crucial. And I know uh, Jay's going to be talking about this a little bit more. But understand that there's something today like a $6.6 .6 trillion deficit between what Americans have and what's needed to retire. That is huge. You don't want to be a statistic. You don't want to be caught in that, you know, that hole of, 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 of that void of, of, of ability to thrive in your retirement. Say, for example, you have $100,000 in an IRA. That's our average account size. Say you're 59 and a half and no growth or loss in your account, you're going to take even distributions until you're 85 or 86.5 years old just for the purposes of math. That means you're only going to have just under $400 a month to live on. It's not enough. Saving $100,000 in an IRA is a great thing. You need more. And so that's what self-directed IRAs can help you do. There are some steps along the way and some things you might not expect. So my hope today is to set your expectations so that your self-directed IRA experience is a good one. And so here we go. When it comes to the total uh, pool of retirement funds, you'll notice that there is something like 23, about 23 and a half trillion in retirement money in the United States. Only three or 4% of that is invested outside the stock market into what's called alternative assets. Although, 
you know, I don't know what's alternative about living in a house. I think most people do, but still investing in real estate is considered alternative. So there is a tremendous amount of money that you, if, if you're raising capital for your real estate career, you can tap into this money using self-directed IRAs, as Jay was uh, alluding to earlier. Huge pile of money there. Now, if you haven't heard about self-directed IRAs, believe me, you're not alone. Very few attorney, well, a few attorneys and, and CPAs even know about this, and it's funny how hmm. they tend to specialize in what they know. And I've even had people tell me that their CPA said that you can't buy real estate with an IRA. Well, I assure you that you can. Uh, you have been able to since Gerald Ford signed the ERISA laws into effect in 1974. They went to effect in 75, so we're right there at 40 years that you've been able to self-direct your IRA. It's nothing new. It's it's not some brand new thing at all. Hey, Karen. Tried and true. Yeah. It, just as a side note, I was born in 1974. It was a really good year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. And it was this day in 1974. Correct. It was it. I didn't know that. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if it was, I don't know that part, but that would be great. And I guess well, there the, you go. the thing that I, I want to underscore on that one, not so much that that was the year I was born, but guys, oftentimes we are not aware of what is available uh, and how long it's been there. It may be new to you, but it's not new. So just keep that in mind as she continues. Thanks. And you know, the truth of it is, is, is that this is a strategy that the wealthy have known about all along. And it's really come to the forefront ever since the recession when there was such a lack of, of, of access to capital. What am I going to do? I need to raise money. How am I going to find it? And suddenly everyone realized self-directed IRAs existed and then our industry really boomed at that time. So, so uh, to continue, with an, we get people who call us and they look at our website and they say, oh, okay, I see these IRAs, but which one's the self-directed one? So that is a really important question. There are six kinds of IRAs, all right? The traditional, the Roth, the SEP, the simple, the inherited, the spousal IRA. An IRA is an IRA. What makes it self-directed is the ability to invest outside the stock market. So maybe you've got money um, with some large company and you're invested in the stock market. You call them and you say, I want a self-directed IRA. They say, oh, great, we have those. What they mean is you can choose any stock bond, mutual fund, or CD that you want. But a truly self-directed IRA lets you invest in alternative assets, like is mentioned here um, you know, on the slide that you're looking at, rental property, commercial land, uh, investing in private companies, having your IRA be the bank and lend money to someone else. So many different things your IRA can do, even buying precious metals, and we, we store them. So your IRA can hold the physical metals, not just a stock in metals, but the actual metals themselves. So, so many different things that a truly self-directed IRA account can do. And we only offer self-directed IRA plans. Now, this is an important thing to talk about. When you're investing, you really need to, like Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. Investment includes risk. And so what if you do lose money in your IRA? What are you going to do? Well, first off, losses can't be written off. So that's one thing to know. And also, they're not easily replaced. And that's because an IRA has contribution limits, and you can only put so much in. But another thing to understand about a self-directed IRA is when your IRA does lose money, that's unfortunate, and, and that sometimes happens. But then you also have to obtain a valuation proving that the IRA lost money. So that's good to know. We don't want you to go there, but you need to know that up front. If you're going to play the self-directed IRA game, know all the rules, play to win. So there we go. What are the limits? What's nice is that the IRS doesn't tell us what we can invest our IRA funds in. They only tell us what we can't invest in, and it's a short list. The IRS says we're not going to invest in life insurance contracts. The IRS says we're not going to invest in collectibles. Pretty short list, two things. We're also not going to invest uh, in S corporations because S corporations don't allow non-human entities to buy shares, but your IRA could make a loan to an S corporation. So there's that. So just some of the limits, not, not very many. Now, you're going to self-direct and you've got money in your current employer's retirement plan. You want to use that money. The truth of it is you probably won't be able to self-direct those dollars until you leave that company. This is really important to know. Again, wanting to help you to play to win, knowing the rules. The funds with your current company are going to stay there for the most part, but you can go to the plan administrator. You can say, does my retirement plan have what's called an in-service transfer provision 
or even though I'm working here, I'm in service, I can still transfer some out into an IRA. The only way to know that is to call the plan administrator and ask about the plan document. What does it say? Okay. So with that said, you really have to wait until you leave your employer to use your 401k, 457, 403b dollars uh, to self-direct into an IRA. Let's talk a little bit about the rules and what you can't do. Well, what you can do is tremendous, but what you can't do, it's pretty important to know that. Again, we want you to have the right expectations so that you have a really a great process and you, and you really know what's coming up next. Prohibited transactions, they're mentioned a little bit in IRS Publication 590. You can find it on the IRS's website. It says you're not going to borrow money from the IRA. You're not, not going to sell anything you already own to the IRA. You don't use it as security for a loan. And you're not going to use an IRA for personal use, present or future. Super important. Now, another thing about self-directed IRAs, I don't know of anywhere else where this exists. Some people are qualified and some people are disqualified to the plan. All right, so the disqualified people, they're your lineal ascendants and descendants, the people who go up and down your family tree. All right. Those people are disallowed. You, your spouse, your parents, your grandparents, your kids, your grandkids, their spouses, plus anybody offering services to the plan is a disqualified person. Got it. But hey, the people who are allowed, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's it, that's exactly where I, we have a couple of questions on this one topic right here that have already come in, and I just want to make sure that we squeeze them in, uh, literally as they come up. And, and it's it's. Uh, let me see. Looks like Madhu again says, uh, "Can my Roth IRA partner?" with my husband's Roth IRA to purchase property? Oh, great question. And I will have a few slides about that. The answer is yes, if you fund concurrently. So stick around because in just a couple of slides, I'm going to be talking about that very thing. Got it. And then the other regarding the rules, the, co the question is, is, does this work with the Canadian RRSP? It doesn't. An IRA is from the um, Internal Revenue Service, Department of Treasury, Department of Labor. You know, it's it's an American thing. You have to be an American citizen. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Cool. And that's. I think that's all of the questions that pertain to what we're talking about at this moment. Okay. Great. Well, to pursue and, and continue on with the qualified person um, idea. If you're thinking about your family tree, now we know up and down the family tree they're disallowed, but out to the sides, the branches on your family tree, so to speak, to continue the analogy, those people are allowed. So your aunts and uncles, your cousins, your brothers and sisters, all of those people, nieces and nephews, they are allowed. So what I'd like to do now is, is take what I've said so far and really get to the point about what we want to avoid with prohibited transactions. If self-directed IRAs were a game, it would be a game of keep away. Keep away from prohibited transactions. Um, so here we go. Number one, neither you nor any of the disqualified people up and down the family tree can benefit from the IRA. So that's personal benefit, present benefit, indirect benefit. And the IRS is, you know, pretty serious about that. So let's talk about that. That means that your IRA is not going to, for example, make a loan to a company uh, that you already own. I just got a call a few minutes ago and somebody said that they have some clients of theirs and they're all brothers. They already own a company and they all want to take their IRAs and invest in the company that they already own. It would be a prohibited transaction because they already own, uh, that's actually back into number two, uh, but it's number one and number two prohibited transaction. They cannot benefit from the IRA by investing their IRA dollars into a company they own, and they also can't buy, sell, or exchange property between the plan and themselves or a disqualified person. Prohibited transactions. Another uh, example is indirect benefit. So your IRA can make a loan, for example, to your sister-in-law, but then your sister-in-law can't go around and then invest that, that money in your company because and here's the money starting with your IRA, going to your sister-in-law, that's fine. But if the money goes back into your IRA, you see it's made this circle around the lock back into your IRA. Now you've received indirect benefit and it's a prohibited transaction as well. So we've covered number one and number two, you know, you're not going to buy, sell, or exchange assets between the plan and someone who's disqualified. Number three, a disallowed person, these up and down the family tree people, can't provide goods, services, or facilities to the plan. All right, here's what that means. In the case of these brothers, 
not there are several reasons why it's prohibited, but also because they're managing and running that company that they want their IRAs to invest in. They're providing services to that asset that they want their IRAs to invest in. That's disallowed. From, from time to time, we'll see a real estate deal where the account holder is listed as a listing agent. Even if they don't get paid for it, they're not allowed to add, um, provide services to the plan even for free. Say your IRA owns a house and the house, um, you've got renters there and the, the lawn needs to be mowed. So you think, oh, I'll send my son out there to do it. Your son is a disallowed person. He can't mow that lawn even for free. And you yourself, you can't go out there and swing the hammers or, you know, or, or, or fix things because the IRS calls that an over contribution of sweat equity. Do you love that? Over contribution <laughs> of sweat equity. Love it. Can't do it. See the hand right there? Keep it arm's length. Talk to the hands. Keep it away. We don't want that. And so when you bring a transaction to us at you direct IRA services, we're going to look at it. Even though it's your responsibility to make sure you're not committing a prohibited transaction, that doesn't mean that we're you know not going to look at your deal. We're definitely going to look at it to make sure that we don't see anything that is obviously a prohibited transaction. Yes. And, and while we're talking about them, the, I, I will underscore that she will do that. <laughs> there have definitely been times <laughs> where we've gone back and forth. I'm like, no, this one's good. And she's like, no, it's not. So you, you can understand that having that uh, as, a, as a secondary source definitely has been very, very helpful to myself as well as to you, the individual who's doing this for the first time. Now, we have a couple of questions. They just started flying in about this whole thing. Uh, for example, uh, so you, are you saying, Karin, from Lee, he's asking, can you sell from an LLC that you own partial owner to the self uh, that you own a partial ownership in to the self-directed IRA? Well, think about that. If you, whether or not it's yourself or an entity, doesn't matter to the IRS. If your entity owns it, you own it. So, if you that means you've got a partial ownership interest in that asset, you can't buy assets you own. So the answer would be no. And if you think, well, maybe it's marginal, maybe I only owe a half of a percentage or something, you can get an attorney opinion letter in that case. But if you own it, your IRA is not buying it. Got it. And then there's a question from George about in-laws. He just says in-laws. <laughs> so I'm assuming he's wondering, yeah. can I do business with No, I know what he means. You know, I'll, I'll listen to this. I mean, I, I, I have uh, friends that are lawyers and attorneys and fight this with the IRS all the time. So here's the thing. Your your in-laws are technically allowed, right? But maybe your IRA invests in your father-in-law's business. And now here it is, the holidays, and now your father-in-law gives you a car, all right? Did you just benefit because of your IRA? <laughs> are you going to have to sit down and prove that you didn't to the IRS? I'd stay away from stepchildren, stay away from in-laws, because it's just a gray area. Um, too many questions. That's my opinion. Got it. And then we're then there's a question from Thomas. Uh, it's like if I set up an LLC, then with a few friends to buy a property, am I prohibited from using my mother's IRA funds? Or since it's an LLC, is it allowed? You know, Thomas, it's disallowed because the IRA owned LLC, sometimes called the checkbook IRA. It's exactly. It is the IRA. It's just a, a pass-through entity for, uh, for the funds. It's just a, um, a container for the IRA money. So all the IRA rules that, that apply to the account directly apply to the IRA-owned LLC. So no, your, um, your mother could not invest because your mother's a disallowed person. Got it. And we've got two more questions on this whole thing. I think Love this it. is a hot topic right here, is that if a person cannot benefit from an IRA, can they still invest their IRA in a property in which they own a portion of the interest in a property under that LLC. And that was no, because Austin. again, it's, it's yeah. And, and the truth of it is, is if you own it, stay away from it. Arms length is the rule. Keep it arms length. Okay. And then the last one here on this topic, it says, okay. And this is from Tim. Uh, can I use my 401k solo plan to invest in an LLC that a company I own will manage. My company will not be swinging hammers, et cetera, but will oversee the contractors doing the work and managing the finances. Think about this. If you get paid from the company that's managing it, are you benefiting directly from your retirement account? I'd say yes. Can you sit in front of an IRS auditor and say with a straight face, I receive no benefit? Um, yes, my, my 401, my solo K owned this property, my personal, the company I personally own managed the company. I got, I derived a paycheck from the company I personally own. How can you sit there and tell the IRS that you received 
no personal benefit. So it, 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 you know, quacks like a duck. It, it walks like a duck. <laughs> it is a duck then. Yes. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. All right. Prohibited transactions. What I forgot to say, this is why I reversed and went back to the slide is, hey, what happens if you commit a prohibited transaction? I mean, it's just prohibited. It doesn't sound that bad. It's not, you know, prohibited is just kind of a light word. Well, here's what happens. If the IRS determines you've committed a prohibited transaction, your entire IRA is dispersed to you as a taxable event like it never existed. So that can result in all kinds of things like back taxes and penalties, and it can be extremely expensive. And it's not just maybe your IRA has a $100,000 property, you know, in Kansas City, but it also has, you know, 200000 in idle cash or something like that. The entire 300000 the entire IRA is dispersed to you as a taxable event, not just the asset that was prohibited. So you do not, do not want to go to prohibited transaction land. It's keep away from prohibited transactions. And we do everything that we possibly can to educate you about this. And, and we're always available. If you've got questions, hey, Karn, what do you think? We'll, we'll tell you what we think. And we can, if it gets legal, we can send you to you know, lawyers and experts who can uh, go deep, uh, deeper into the legal aspects of whether something's prohibited or not. Just so important because these retirement accounts are so that you've got abundant wealth in, in, your, in your old age, you know, as, as you grow older, right? We want you to keep that wealth. We want you to do well, and we don't want you to commit a prohibited transaction. Okay, moving on. This, this is important to know, too, if we're talking about self-directed IRAs as, as a game that you're going to play to win, you need to know who are the players in the game. Now, there's you, and you're obviously driving the bus. It's self-directed. You, it all begins with you. I'll just say that. Then there's your IRA. But when, your I, when you are investing your IRA into an asset, guess what? You don't sign the purchase contract. What? What a surprise. Yes, it's because you are not investing. The IRA is investing. So we sign it on behalf of the IRA. How do you like that? Surprise if you didn't know that. That's why I'm so glad you're listening to this webinar because these are the things that you might not expect when you're self-directing your IRA and you're all ready to go, you've got this game plan, you're moving ahead like a freight train, and then here comes a brick wall. What do you mean I can't sign this document for my IRA? So know these rules up front so that you have a very smooth transaction. You direct IRA services, major player in this game. In fact, we're your point of contact for everything in your IRA. When I founded the company back in 2009, I was looking for a custodian to hold our company's funds. I looked at banks. In 2009, no, banks were dropping like flies. I thought that's not a safe place. Plus, banks are depository. They're getting checking and savings accounts, money coming in and out, in and out all day. They're making loans. I preferred the non-depository trust company custodian. So I selected a trust company called American Estate and Trust to hold our clients' funds. And so we've had a good relationship with them for the last five-plus years, uh, and it's just it's just growing leaps and bounds. So it's, it's wonderful. So these are the four players in the game. Know that going in so that you're not surprised. We want you to be, uh, we want you to have a game plan that's not going to uh, give you some, it's not going to blindside you. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So let's talk about buying real estate with your IRA. And the reason I picked that asset is because most of our account holders, that's the one asset they invest in the most. These rules uh, apply to other assets as well, but we'll just use real estate as an example. So the upside to buying real estate with your IRA, guess what? Any money that comes back in is tax-free in a Roth or tax-deferred in a different kind of account. Yay. So that's wonderful. You don't have to pay income tax. And you know that new Obama tax at 3.8%? You're never going to get hit with that if you're investing with your IRA. That's, that's great. So there's no time limit for holding the property. The IRA buys it today. The IRA sells it tomorrow. That's fine. IRA buys it today, you sell it in 20 years, that's fine too. No clock is ticking there. Your IRA can borrow money. Now, whether you want to or not is another question, and we're going to discuss that in another slide. But there's a potential to earn a large rate of return on invested capital, and that's because the gain is coming back into the IRA and not being diminished by tax, so you get to compound faster. All that money, see, because here's, here's my point. If you invest outside your IRA and you get, you gain and you had a you had a windfall and profit, yay for you, except the IRS comes and takes their share, right? So you don't really have a hundred percent to go back out into the next deal. With an IRA you do because you're not going to pay tax until you take the money out. So these this is the upside of the self directed IRA. The downside about uh about buying real estate with your IRA, 
you don't get those tax write-offs. Maybe your IRA owns a, a, a condo in Hawaii and it's a rental because, of course, the IRA assets are always for investment purposes only and not for personal use, right? So you fly out to Hawaii and you think, oh, great, well, my IRA owns a house there. I'm just going to write off my whole trip. No. And that's why you need a good tax advisor that understands that because you don't get tax advantages of owning real estate. You talk to your tax advisor and be upfront. Make sure that, you know, you're an investor. You need a good tax advisor that's your partner, really. You've got to have these trusted advisors. So make sure they know your game plan. And so you're, not, you're, you're of course, solely responsible for all gains and losses in the IRA. It is self-directed. We're never going to tell you what to invest in. We're not going to tell you if it's a good deal or a bad deal. You're making that decision entirely on your own. Maybe you're being advised. Maybe you've got a third-party advisor out there. But you're responsible for the gains and losses, so know that. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you can't replace the losses in an IRA easily. You've got contribution limits that are going to keep you from replenishing a loss. So that's the downside about buying real estate with the IRA. Okay, Karen, we got a couple of questions here. Um, and the the first one is, can my Roth IRA then borrow from my rollover IRA to purchase property? Well, you're not going to do that. Um, what you can do is move um, – what you can do is move the money from the one IRA to the other and then do it that way. You're not, you're, uh, your plans aren't going to borrow from one another, but you can transfer or roll the money over. Got it. And then let me see. There was, I think I saw one. Uh, what percentage of your self-directed IRA can you use for investing? Really, pretty much 100%. We ask that you leave a minimum balance of $325 in the account. It's not going to break you pretty much, um, but everything else can go out into your uh, into your investments. Got it. And then we have a question from Austin. It says, if, uh, if investing in an LLC in which the IRA holder is a member uh, is prohibited, how much – how might one structure a multiple partner deal on the acquisition of an investment property? Call a lawyer. Yeah, I, 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 had a, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was like, I know exactly what she's going to say on that one, because that's that's kind of my response as well. While there are many best practices on that particular type of question, Austin, there it it there are just so many extra concerns that come into play. And you're going to have to work with competent uh, a counsel to, to make that one work. And if you need referrals, Jay knows people, I know people we can refer uh, to you who understand what a self-directed IRA is. Got it. And then the last one I looks like on this particular, it says, so what would you recommend in making available uh, your close relative's IRA funds? I'm sure I can convince my mother to invest in a project with me, her son, but strangers seems like a long shot. Now, uh, I'm going to address this, uh, you know, Karen, I'm going to take this one. <laughs> I will address this one later when that. I when I begin to talk, uh, Thomas. So if, if I fail to to uh, bring it, be, please bring it up again. And I'll make sure that we, we definitely cover that one for you, because uh, one thing everyone should know, uh, I've never had any of my relatives in any of my deals. And we've been doing millions of dollars of this stuff. Uh, for a number of years now. So uh, while I hear you, it seems like a long shot, but you can totally get there, Thomas. And, and we'll talk about that when I get a shot to go. All right. Love that. Okay. All right. So basically, um, to, to continue now, your IRA can borrow money. Um, and what's great about that is that you may not even know that. And I used to be a lender. I used to be a mortgage lender. And boy, I was surprised when I found out that the IRA can borrow money. So here's what it is. This is it's not the way you would expect, I promise. What you might expect is that you go out to a loan officer and go get a loan. It's not like that at all. It's called a non-recourse loan. And what it really is, is it's like a commercial loan. And it's not made to you. It's made to the IRA. So what makes it non-recourse is that upon default, the lender can only come against the subject property. They can't come against you personally. They can't come against any other assets in your IRA. So that's good, right? Non-recourse, your IRA can do it, loan made to the IRA. But let's, uh, let's examine this a little bit further, okay? So upon default, um, we already kind of covered that. So to go on, that uh, there are not a lot of lenders to choose from. Um, I do have a list, though. If you'd like 
a list of non-recourse lenders. We put it together as a courtesy for people who are asking. I'd be happy to send it to you. Just email me at khall at the letter U, udirectira.com, khall at udirectira.com, and I'll have that on my last slide as well if you want to write that down. I will be happy to send you a list of non-recourse lenders. Now, they're going to require a larger down payment. Know that. Your IRA um, is going to need to come up with 40, 45, 50, maybe 60 percent of the of the capital, but this non-recourse lender will lend lend the balance. Now you can't personally guarantee a loan to the IRA. You can't do that because you're disallowed to your IRA. Uh, but it could be personally guaranteed by a third person as long as they're not disqualified. So that's good to know. Your IRA can borrow money. However, the next slide: if your IRA borrows money. The proceeds your IRA receives because of borrowed money can be taxed. Wait, you say, an IRA is it's a tax-free, tax-deferred environment. Yes, it is, unless you do two things. Number one is have the IRA borrow money. The other one is have your IRA run a business. UDFI is the tax that you come up against when your IRA borrows non-recourse debt, unrelated debt financed income tax. When your IRA runs a business, and by the way, flipping property uh, can be running a business in your IRA. So you want to be careful. You want to talk to your tax advisor. You want to go to the IRS's website. Look up Publication 598. Read about these taxes. When your IRA owes them, your tax person now creates what's called a Form 990-T and takes care of that. And so those taxes are paid. Now, understand this, too, that your IRA will pay the UBIT UDFI tax if it owes it now you know, this in the tax year, whatever. But then when you retire and you take the money out, you're still going to pay income tax on the gain. It doesn't mean that it's a deal killer. It just means begin with the end in mind, pencil it out, understand these things are there. Are you still going to make a profit? If the answer is yes, you know, then you probably want to go forward. So just know that these things are there. Okay. So um, if there aren't any other questions, I'll go on to say that uh, when you're buying real estate, I mean, how do you get a house? How do you get a commercial building? How do you get a piece of raw land into the IRA? Well, you know, the number one thing is open a self-directed IRA account. And it seems pretty obvious, but I'll tell you what it's not. Um, so many times I get the phone call where someone says, hey, Karin, this weekend I was uh, shopping for property. I made an offer on a property. Now I want my IRA to buy it. And they don't have an IRA. That, that's a problem. It's a problem because, um, number one, they don't even have an IRA, so th their IRA can't buy an asset they personally own. So they have to exit that contract entirely, enter into a new contract with the IRA as the buyer, the custodian for the benefit of the IRA. That's how it's titled. It's not your, remember, there's you and then there's your IRA. You're not the, not the same entity. So open this self-directed IRA, but hey, wait a minute, don't you need an earnest money deposit? It's going to take a, your current custodian a couple weeks to get the money in the IRA. So what you want to do is open the account, get the money into it. Take, again, it's going to take this third party a couple weeks to put the money in your new self-directed IRA, then shop for a property because then you're going to have the earnest money in your IRA. Then you're going to be able to have the capacity to actually you know, go forward with a contract or have your IRA do it. Remember, the IRA is the buyer, not you. So the way that this works is that you give us a direction letter. It's our form. It's one page. It's real simple. Then you give us the supporting documentation, which would be the offer to purchase or whatever it may be. We review it, look for prohibited transactions, make sure it's titled correctly, make sure the IRA is receiving an asset in exchange for the, the money. Then we fund, we re you record, get your keys, beautiful. The rents then are paid to the IRA. So one way for your tenants to pay their rent is to make the check directly payable to the custodian for the benefit of the IRA. Another way to do this, and a very good way uh, that, that saves a lot of problems, is to have a property manager. This is where a property manager comes in. Because remember I was saying keep everything arm's length? Yay, because instead your tenants can make their checks payable to the property manager, and maybe the garbage disposal breaks and it needs to be fixed. Well, you can't go in and fix it, of course, because there's, you can't commit an over-contribution of sweat equity, right? So you need that third party to go out and, and do those repairs, and they need money to do it. So maybe a property manager is the thing you want. And then the tenants make their checks payable to the property management company. Plus, 
is it really their business that your IRA owns the property anyway? And there are other reasons to do it. So there you go. Now here's an example, and this is going to answer some of the questions that we had at the beginning. I was talking about people who are disallowed to each other, lineal ascendants and descendants. And so, yes, as long as you fund concurrently, you can invest with a disallowed person. Here's an example. A father and a son are going to buy a house together. Dad has 50% cash. Son comes in with 50% in his traditional IRA. The title reads, custodian for the benefit of the son's IRA, 50% owner. The father, 50% owner, tenants in common. So husbands and wives, brother, um, you know, uh, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, you can do it this way. And like I say, aren't they disqualified? Yes, but as long as they have no ownership interest in the asset before the deal, if it's a new deal, then they can, they can invest concurrently. After the deal, after it's funded and recorded and, and solidified and executed, then that's when this disqualified person rule comes into effect. So neither the father nor the son are ever going to live in the property. Neither are any of their ascendants or descendants. In fact, they don't even get to have personal use of the property for even one day, technically. That's how it works. But as long as disallowed people fund concurrently, you can do that. After the deal, they're never going to buy each other out. And expenses, here comes a property tax bill. The father is going to write a check out of his personal funds for half. The son's IRA is going to pay half. Same thing with the rent. Here comes the rent check. And half of it goes to the father, half of it goes to the son's IRA. So you can see that if you have a renter, they're going to need to write two checks. One to the father, because the father can't get 100% of the rent and give half of it to his son's IRA. That's a prohibited transaction. So they really do have to write two checks. So this is another time when a property manager can solve that problem. So there you go. Now, as, as anybody who's ever you know, owned a piece of property knows, these real estate assets have expenses. What if your IRA runs out of money? What if you have to pay that property tax? What if you have to uh, have money to replace that garbage disposal and there's no more money in your IRA? Somebody was asking about reserves. Well, you, you really should have reserves in your IRA if your IRA owns a property because you're going to have expenses. But if you run out of funds, this is what you can do. Number one, you can make an annual contribution. Now, how much depends upon your income, your age, and your account type. So you want to, uh, you want to get uh, good advice from a tax advisor. Number two, you can liquidate other assets in your IRA. So maybe your IRA um, owns, uh, say, for example, some gold bullion. Sell the gold bullion and bring the cash into the IRA and use that to cover the shortfall. You can transfer money from other retirement accounts. You could bring on a partner, as long as they're not disqualified. The IRA could even get a loan to make up for a shortfall, but it would probably be from a, uh, an individual here. I don't think an institution would make that loan. And if all else fails, well, then you can just sell the asset. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you knew this moment was coming. In fact, you were hoping that wasn't going to be the moment. That particular webinar went on for at least twice as long. And for those of you, again, in the members area, you can go catch the rest of it. By all means, go do so because there's a whole lot more information that was provided uh, that we were able to go into and to go deeply with. And I know uh, for those of you that are members, you definitely want to try that out. And again, if you want to try it out, again, as a complete gift, so to speak, you can go over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash training. Uh, it's a $1 30 days, it'll at least give you more than enough time to listen to the rest of what you just heard. But I'm guessing you're going to stay a while. Make sure that you join the Facebook group if you do take us up on that trial, because that's where a lot of deals have been getting done. I mean, recently we saw a 70 unit building that we were discussing, <laughs> believe it or not, that nobody wanted. It was like, ah, eh, not for me. Uh, but that's OK. You can go check it out. And if you happen to still be listening at this moment, here's something that I want to make sure that you guys know. I know it's last minute. That's why it's right now at the end I'm actually going to be speaking in the L.A. area, speaking in the L.A. area today. The day you are listening to this, if you are listening to this on the very first day that it came out, I'm going to be speaking in the L.A. area. So uh, hopefully you can uh, track me down and we can meet in person. That would also be fun. It's been fun sharing information with you guys, and I look forward to continuing to do so. Until next time. <laughs>